Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Second half coming up here. First map of the Grand Finals. Berlin, make some noise! This is going to be, well, an impossible task for Avangar. Try to run it back from a 12 to 3 first half score. Astralis, even when they were down, even when they were broke and they had their, well, a chance maybe to get back in the game, Avangar, there was no stopping Astralis. Some of the calls, some of the mid round calls, and obviously that deal round with Sip, it's just too much to handle. Winning the pistol has to be the first step, obviously, but even then, it will be very, very tricky indeed. Let's see what they've got. Double grenade into the corner, and Adren already down to 12. Lucky to be alive. Yeah, that's a that's a crappy way to have to start this pistol round. Adren gonna have to chill for a bit at logs and not be too aggressive, and he's which is a shame because he's been phenomenal. He's been one of the one of the fraggers, one of the top fraggers for this Avantar side. Kicker gonna take the peaks. He's glaive at. And the choke point is just forced back into the bomb site. Two Molotovs, two smokes, and two decoys on the Avangar side. Two Molotovs feels like a be execute. Maybe. Two decoys feels like a fake. Has anyone ever successfully done that? No. With but decoys? this would be the time to do it. It would be cool. Device gonna be boosted up, so already that makes it tricky. There's a little bit. Rolling in, smoke in front to counter it pretty quickly. So far, none of the smokes have been used, but they're thinking about it. What does Astralis say at this point when they're hearing the decoy thing? What's going on? Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not entirely sure. I, mean, I, guess, I guess they're hoping Avangarde would force some kind of rotation, but Astralis has kept three players here and two players at the A bomb site. They're just so confident it's going to be a hit towards this site, and they're correct. Spamming through the smoke glaives in a dangerous battle. Two quick kills, but Device is still here. And we've seen him win incredible pistol rounds in the past. 56 HP, four on three scenario. Just yesterday was outrageous for him. He's now by construction, waiting back here. Adren, oh, that needed to be a kill. Sanji can still bring it back, and he himself has been playing out of his mind in the grand final so far, but they just take him out. Magus with a quick kill, devices down on the other side. Two on two. Oh, Jane, that's a nice flick, and that's a triple kill. Already doing better in this first round than he did the entire first half. And now Dupree, I don't think he can check everything. I think Avangar has actually found a way uh, to win this round. That's... That took everything, didn't it? All on it. Jane with a triple and a fourth round for Avangar. It's the spam as they approach the smoke. Uh, like Glaive was trying to play behind it, waiting for them to come through, and that, that spam coming right through just throws off his entire play. You know, you know that smoke that's down that they're all trying to come through? That was Sip putting it down from the orange box as he underhands the smoke so that they all have to line up against the wall as they're yeah. coming into the... It's so smart. And I mean, the fact that that, it, that in itself could have shut them all down. Look at this, they're all funneled here because that smoke that's right, that's to the left. Man. Well, I, I mean, even winning the pistol round is obviously going to be phenomenal for Avangar, but you did it in the best possible way. Jame getting three kills, including that. Spectacular headshot. So for someone who had one frag in the first half, that's got to feel good that you at least start things out well this time. Three Mac 10s and two AK 47s. One defender for Astralis at the A bomb site. Bomb is still very far back on the map, so no one's really dedicated. They haven't made their decision of where they want to go, but with three players top banana, that's got to make you feel a tad bit nervous. You can see the investigation coming from Buster. He spots one. There's the follow-up peak, so now they know two are here, and this utility usage has got to scare the hell out of them. They need to fall back. Oh, he's still sticking around. I was going to say, surely if you're Buster. That just smells like a setup, doesn't it? You get that deep in towards the bomb site, and then a bunch of people peek you at the same time. That should that should tell you something. Yeah, I'm I'm actually amazed they're still fighting, and yeah, yeah they're gonna come out on top because the better men of the web because the better weapons. But this is insane. And actually, look at the position from Magus. Oh, that's not good. That could actually funnel Avangar back towards the B bomb site, and now he's gonna hide Magus. He hears Kicker. He hears the footsteps. The bomb is left on the low. Kicker cannot leave his teammate like this. He can't do that. He comes back to help. Oh, and now Avangar, they finally stabilized, but there was way too much danger in this round. I absolutely agree. If they had run back to B based off that one MP9, that would have been devastating. Now they found a way to make it back, and out of, that could have gone any which way, I think. Dupree with the CC, hoping that someone would come lurking past, but it's going to be fine for now. Maybe 
There's some SMG on the ground you can find somewhere. Certainly Avangar gonna be winning the fifth round here. 12 to five, still a very long way to go. But it's gonna put a bit of a smile on your face to see Jame now picking it up, starting started the work with something. Right, uh, well yeah, just these two rounds, he's already had uh, five kills from one in the first half, so fair play. And I mean, at least even if you lose this map, at least if you're avant-garde, if you're buying him time to kind of get going, and maybe maybe the nerve, maybe the first half of the nerve's obviously got outplayed a number of times by Astralis, but settle him down, get some kills under his belt, make him feel a little bit better, and you can at least go in the next map and say, he, yeah. was, he started the fire right at the end. And that's better than nothing. Nothing is also what the Grief found over at Tapanana. Didn't, didn't get anything for it. So that's a shame. Well, the odds are looking even worse than they were uh, to start off with. So that's, I guess that's understandable at this current moment in time. I'd say so. 12 to five. That is still a heavy lead for the Danish side. It's four Mac 10s and a and an AK on the other side. So this time you would expect for there to be a, maybe a bit more speed, jumping Mac 10s. Well, I mean, what scares you about it is it like that's uh, that's a buy you sometimes see when they've already like made the decision of where they want to go, right? This is where you see like the commitment up banana. Yeah. And if they're going to be full blown committed right out of spawn, they can run into a stack. We saw Astralis just do it in the previous round. They almost got lured into that trap. Astralis is going to have uh, some small measure of, of things to fight with. Upgraded pistols, not a whole lot of utility, but there's going to be danger, uh, you know, if Avangard isn't careful about this. And like they, they didn't, they weren't careful the previous round. We've already seen an example of it, and certainly saw many of them throughout the tournament of just what happens when you afford Astralis even a slight opening, anything that you can give them, and it can backfire really quickly. That's a good fight there. Bit of a setup with a flashbang. We do have another interesting stack over at the B-bomb side. In the corner, if they throw a Molotov there, then both people already just go down, and it's just a USB on top, so you have to assume it's going to be somewhat limited how much damage that's going to be doing. That's doing better than the MAC-10. Good shot from Buster. Bomb still back in T-spawn. It's being picked up now. But the foothold in the B-bomb site is strong for Avangard. It's just Zip to defend at first oranges. Free throwing himself for the smoke with a flashbang. I think they were just blind spraying that, and it works out. And I don't think there's really much Zip could do here. He's going down. And now everybody's staying alive for the avant-garde side. Six to 12. And taking a step closer in the right direction. But you can't really help, you, you still have that feeling in the back of your mind like any minute, Astralis can just slam the door on them. Absolutely, but I mean, at least for the moment, we'll see how this first gun round goes. It's bold for Avangard to stick with the two Mac 10s, considering the disparity in the scoreline. You think they'd want to upgrade immediately and start actually trying to grind back into this game? We'll see what they can play with it. Device with an AWP, gonna go for the peak down mid. No one swinging wide to challenge. And here comes that three man utility usage. Down banana for Astralis that we've seen so many times and so much damage and Buster's gone. He eats all of it right in the first round. And that's gotta feel terrible because you know that's just gonna be happening every single round for as long as this goes on. You have to be worried about which combination of nades Astralis is gonna use. You know what's so stupid as well as that? Everybody knows this. We mentioned it on the desk. It, it, all the teams know that Astralis are so good at this, so you would think that that would cause some kind of a fall off in the success rate of it. But they're still so good at it, even when you know it's coming, even if you think that, yeah, well, we've got to be careful of the grenades. Yes, they're the best team in the world, they're throwing them, and somehow still you end up walking into them. That's That in itself must add an extra layer of frustration. It's like, well, we had this conversation and still, yeah, well, Lisa Dren gets to upgrade to the AK-47. He had one of the MAC-10s. So still some weapons to get back into this. Sanji on the other side of the map, all on his own, but he, he only has a MAC-10 as well. So it almost feels like they have to hit the B-bomb site and turn him into a lurk. There is a deep smoke for Small Pit, and it's not fooling anyone. Actually, Magisk is even more convinced than ever that it's going to be this B-bomb site. They're making noise over here, so if that's an attempt at a fake, it's a very weak one. And Sanji's not able to initiate any action because of the MAC-10. This will be Kickered, getting a kill, but the crossfire, Magisk, even though we couldn't really see much, still very effective, and Glaive back here doing the damage, and Magisk again, the bomb is down, and Sanji 
In this kind of a, of a play, this is something that, you know, the, the, the old original NIP lineup used to run. You're playing over a boiler with just one person, and when you start making noise at B, if they rotate people out, that person can either get them in mid-rotation, or you can just sneak up behind them as they're getting through CT spawn. So there's, there's a bunch of ways in which, yeah, well, this is, this is a real throwback, isn't it? That's a um, thing of beauty. Almost brings a tear to my eyes. It Moses. definitely brings a tear to my eyes. That's a gorgeous-looking map. Yeah, it truly is. Another timeout. I, I mean, the problem is they're throwing that fake. There's no one there to actually initiate the fake, and they're making noise at top B, so they're actually giving up the fact that that's where they're going to attack. Yeah. And not only that, but if you're leaving a player in boiler when you have a four on five, you're actually reducing the number of people you have to take the bomb site itself. And stop cold. So 13 to six, another timeout taken, another timeout ticking away. There's no more money for the offensive side if they lose this. Alvangar is desperate. With the bank being empty, Avangar have to win this next round. <laughs> or Astralis probably bounce from 13 to 15 with almost without skipping a beat, really. Pretty decent grenade to the bottom. It might not seem like a lot. Oh, that's that's great though. That's the vice hitting a shot on kicker down to eight. But just again for any new viewers, <laughs> even even the 13 or 15 damage done there is the difference when you're fighting AK versus M4 that evens out that fight. So a single headshot will do the damage and the, the all the M4 essentially become AKs at that point in time. Well, I mean, I just think it's fascinating how far back on the map that Avangar is starting up the AT side after getting blown up by the nades. They just don't want anything to do with it. They don't want to mess with it in any way. Now they've been tagged by the AWP, so Jame has to give over the op. Kick it low. Flashbang at the corner. Glaive waiting for it. He is the grenade. He knows that. That was their initiation to top banana. Look at, the way, look at the way he's holding his nade, even with even with the, him being the only defender at that bomb site. He's not scared whatsoever. Looked like the vice could have got caught then. The texture in the background there almost sort of masking the model, but it didn't. And now what do they do? They're trying to go B this time. I mean, they've got the setup for it. Glaive, 30 seconds. Smoke timing is off the charts. And Sip is there as well. They still have a couple of banks to buy even more time. And trying to get through. Sanji down. The bomb is now on the ground. 22 seconds. And another nearly impossible. Sip even through smoke. Just tracking him. Glaive trying to see if he can get it done. And Jane will take him down. But can they actually win this one? A two on four. Or actually a two on five. That now at least they're getting a bomb plant in. Kick it with the orb he gets downed immediately make is somehow able to get that shot and now it's all on jame he's low on health and he's a low end device just edging him out and that will be round number 14 for astralis avant-garde at least they get the 800 dollar bomb hunt bonus that's i mean it is a really small comfort but that's the only thing we can really look at oh my god yeah, that is just so brutal. And that, that smoke that Glaive managed, that, that saved him holding his nerve. He hears them taking banana, he hears the pop flash falls into the site, and he knows they're jumping over car. He can tell the footsteps that they're not actually going to swing around the corner and attack the bomb site. And you almost dare them in a way. You call the bluff. If they want to swing and turn around the corner and just basically rush the B bomb site, you're risking what's on the other side. And Avangar had no idea it was just Glaive. He holds that smoke until it really messes with the timing of that hit. They have to come through it. Something that Avangar wasn't able to do, hold those nades deep into the rounds in the first half. Look how far back they are again. Buster and Jame not even yep. messing with that main ramp. I mean, Jame has the op trying to find a pick, but even Kicker not turning the corner towards, towards Banana whatsoever until just now, until he knows the nades have been used. Just looking at the way Astralis play, you can tell they're so far inside of their own comfort zone. There's no pressure being put on them to try and recreate anything or come up with something new. Flashbang at that corner, but Glaive is immediately back in. Could have hit the blind timing, but did not this time. They do fall. They do get pushed back a little bit further on the map this time. So top mid and top banana. Actually almost getting retook top banana now for Astralis. They're thinking about it. Device still lingering around. 
Otherwise, oh, mid-air, but Tanji, great timing against Device. Magus now falling back, going to be putting up that Molotov to try and buy a little bit of time. A big opening here for Avangar. And Astralis knows this is going to be a fake. They know that Avangar has to use any advantage they have, and that's taking out the the bomb site. They're rotating everyone here. They know the hit is coming. They know it's going to be everyone on the attack, and they're just holding on to Pit perfectly. Zip to help him out. He does eventually go down, but like I said, of Astralis here to defend and all fangle inside the site and somehow Avangar coming on top of these these battles. Zimix just waiting around the edge of the smoke. He's been waiting. He's actually sacrificed the three to try and get more than just the one kill. And there he picks it up, refiring it. He knows Kicker is in there, and that's the bomb down Zip. The sacrifice was all worth it. He gets a triple and now Sanji has to back on out. There's no winning the round. That's 15. That is map point for Astralis. He could have tried to help out Dupree in there. He could have done something. He was hiding at the edge of the smoke instead. That's pretty heartless, but at the same time, you see the result. I think you're fine with it if you're Dupree. Yeah. I mean, he, remember, he's one of the B defenders. Usually on those kinds of hits, he's not even supposed to be there. The fact that they had the read that it was going to be an all-in from Avangar after the Molotov faded is perfect. And a great recovery from Astralis. 15 to 6, they've got nine chances to close out this map one of the Berlin Major Grand Finals. And against three pistols, the AWP on Jame, I think they've got a great chance, but another good find. Another good hit for Avangard, and they follow it up with Buster. Spray through Sip, the last bullet that he sprays. Had more in the chamber, but... That's just so stupid. It is actually stupid. <laughs> the, the opening is there for one second. And Sip rolls in, Jame trying to focus at top mid to smoke. To his left, and there's Dupree, in fact, taking down Sanji. So far, nobody knows, nobody has found out what does it take to stop this version of Astralis. And it's not like they haven't tried. I mean, a lot has been thrown at them, even in this Inferno game. And none of it can be replicated. Whatever you find in one round, you can't do it in the next. Dupree walking in, and he wins the fight against the trend and now kickers he goes down to sip and that's 16 rounds to the six of Avangar and Astralis winning the first map here at the major finals that's a brutal comprehensive and Avangar